Hey guys, it's Robert Gardner with the Robert Gardner Wellness Podcast. Very excited to have Jason Carter on the program today. He's talking about scheduling software in the massage industry. But uh, Jason, can you introduce uh, the audience to yourself and let them know where they can find you online? Yeah, absolutely. So I found the Appointment Hero. That's the name of the scheduling software. And you can find this appointmenthero.com. It's A P P T H E R O. Um, dot com. And essentially, I know there are like a ton of schedulers in the industry. This one is different because it's your actual reception. It's an AI reception. And I'm sure we'll get into that uh, as we continue talking. Cool. So how did you get involved with the scheduling software? So probably about two to three years ago, um, I actually came to your group, Robert, Massage Entrepreneurs, and I'm a software developer. So like, I know, I don't know anything about massage. At least at the time, I didn't know anything about, you know, the industry. And I just asked the question. I said, hey, I'm a software developer. How can I help? You know, and I got over, I don't know, 50, 60 responses, maybe even like 100 responses from different people. And the main thing I was looking for was not necessarily what people, what people's issues was. Like, that was part of it. My, my main thing was how would people react to it? Like, are these people that are easy to work with? Are these people I'm going to work with, want to work with? Or am I going to get like, you know, some kind of like shield? And I didn't get a shield, right? I mean, some people, you know, like maybe one or two, but for the most part, everybody was really nice. And they were like, hey, I'm having issues here, here, and here. And so when I saw that, I said, okay, this is it, you know, because I've been in, under, in other industries before and I didn't get the same reception. So. Hmm. So what are the the challenges you see with like setting up, is it Appointment Hero? Is that the, the mm -hmm. full name? Yep. Like what, what are the challenges with setting up software for therapists? So the biggest thing is like when people have, like, so that people fall into two camps, right? They have a scheduling software or they don't. And so if they have a scheduling software, the biggest thing is I don't want to move because all of my stuff is in here and there's a lot of issues. And so the biggest challenge for me was well, let me just do it for you, right? For the people who already have it. So like they already understand like some of the, the problems that they have because they already have it. For those who don't have scheduling software, the biggest thing I've seen is, it's, to them it's all about personalization. And if I use something that automates any process, you know, I can no longer be personal. So I have to text all of my clients. I have to like appointment reminders. I have to send them all intake forms. Like they are, they have to do everything because they feel like, you know, it's their personal touch. Man, this is, so I think this cuts right into something I talk about all the time with students. They always talk about wanting to outsource their social media. Mm -hmm. And I go, well, what do you mean? And they're like, well, I just want somebody to do all of that. And I go, you want to outsource connection? Right. And they go, no, I just, because the thing is, they don't really think the social media is about connecting with the audience. It's just right. this, like, ad. It's just a ticker tape. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Okay. Making social media content and making 100 pieces of content and having somebody schedule it and post it over three months, one a day, is one thing. But, like, you made the content to connect with an audience. If somebody else is making the content, like I'll never forget, I was scrolling through my Instagram feed and I saw the same post from mm -hmm. two different therapists. <laughs> and I figured out what it was. They had bought a package and they had posted the same piece of pre-made for them social media content. Right. There's no connection. Sometimes what I do is I pick up, like, man, I'm here with Jason Carter. We're making a podcast and this audio sucks. I can't figure out how to get nothing to work. And that's the post for the day <laughs> on Instagram stories because it lets people into like a little piece of my world. Yep. One of the things that I have told people when we talk about essentially the tech revolution is I think scheduling software is one of the most innovative things that's happened to the industry in the last 20 years. I agree. It completely changed the, the nature of how you could onboard clients and I, before I had scheduling software, I went, well, this is a waste of time. I just, you know, I just talk to them or do a text message and schedule. And it's like, no, 
It's way faster, it's way more efficient, allows them ease of access at three o'clock in the morning or whenever they want to schedule. They can yep. see your schedule and when you're available and be able to book it. Exactly. And, and, and there are some things, going kind of back to what you said about the social media, there are some things you want to be that person. Like you want to be hands-on with it, like maybe thank you notes. But there are some things, like you said, like appointment reminders, right? You don't have to send every client an appointment reminder. Because the thing that makes that personal is their name, the service that they have, and the date of their appointment. You know, that's that's personal to them. That's And that can be automated. I think what's funny is I was talking to someone in the group about intake forms, and they were telling me that, you know, intake forms, I have to sit down. It has to all be done by them. And I said, well, if the scheduling software sends the intake form and the client fills it out before they get to you, you can still sit, you should still sit down and speak with them, you know, at the, right before their appointment. So it's still it's semi-automated, right? Well, that part is completely automated. And they say, no, 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 no. So I think there's some where, you know, understanding what can be automated and how to automate your business so that you can grow. Because you, if you want to grow, Right. And I think that's where Appointment Hero is really made for people who want to grow. Then automation is key in certain areas of your business. You can't automate everything, but, but what you can automate, you should. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan. Like, I'm, I'm definitely less tech averse than a lot of educators in the industry. And I try to work with students and the thing that I see that they get low marks on is business. Mm -hmm. They're not thinking like business people. They're thinking like massage therapists. And normally the business acumen, not technique, not even anything I teach, the business acumen is what's holding them back. And they don't understand what something as simple as scheduling software does. There's some disconnect. And I think some of it has to do with the fact that they're artists who went into a business to help people yep. and they went to massage schools where the school owners are still talking about the yellow pages. Wow. They've not really adapted to a Google internet digital sort of media, you know, cell phones are banned from the school. Like I see this stuff regularly wow. and it's like, how do I give a social media talk, but you won't let me stream to social media. Right. I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. And they're like, well, it's, it's a liability. We can't have phones in the school. It's like, I don't know how to tell them this. This isn't a phone. This is a small computer that connects to all of the information that humanity's ever created. Right. And yeah, I, I see it a lot. I, funny enough, I was on a, a demo call with a massage therapist yesterday. Yeah. And she was telling me, that and I, and I still do demos like a lot of software companies like it's just sign up and be done I do demos for a lot of different reasons one um, I really want to understand like when I'm talking to them I want to understand what are your problems right and so she was so she said this and it, it was kind of like a, a light bulb for me she said I love doing massage I love it it's my craft this is what I do I hate doing back office work I'm yeah. not good at it I wish I could outsource it. And then I said, okay, like what? You know, and she says, well, I know I need to send, uh, I know I need to market, right? And I know I need to market to the clients I already have because it's easier to get them to schedule an appointment than it is a new client, right? And so, you know, her, her biggest issue was sending email newsletters. And a lot of the times what I see is like, you have a lot of scheduling software and they may do one thing, but not everything, you know? So then I have to go and I have to log into this software and then I have to go and remember my password and yeah. so on and so forth. And, and I've done a lot of these demo calls. And so like some of the issues I found, I think you asked me this question earlier, was that, you know, people don't want to have to log into 20 different softwares to accomplish a task. They just want to send their email or they want to send an email newsletter. They want a template, right? Because and they want a template that is more specific to massage than just a general template because yeah. you know and I know what to say. Like, what do I say? How should I say it? Those kinds of things. And so I see a lot of these issues. And the biggest one really was was the phones. And there are a lot of people who I've spoken to that kind of follow, I guess, two sides of this. One side is, you know, 
Well, everybody shares this online anyway. So I don't need my phone, which is false. I was, I think there's a stat that said 82% of customers prefer to schedule via text, right? And so even if it's not a phone call, if you're in a session, it's not like a, my barber will like stop and answer the phone, right? Yeah, <laughs> my barber's, barber will. barber's different. <laughs> right. But it's like a you, you almost system. expect that at the barber shop a little bit. Exactly. And I still don't like, you know, when they do it, but that's what they do. But as a massage therapist, you cannot stop what you're doing and then go answer the phone or answer a text. And so the biggest problem there is if I'm looking for an appointment as a customer or as a consumer, and I text you and I haven't heard back from you in 30 minutes, I'm going to look somewhere else. You know, or you may say, well, I'll get back to you at the end of the day, which is what a lot of massage therapists tend to do. Yeah. And by that time, I've scheduled an appointment with somebody else who was available. And so when I saw that problem, I said, okay, how can we, is there a way to solve that or not? And then I said, okay, instead of me just going out to solve it, I always talk to massage therapists and say, what would help you? Like, how would you solve this? What would you do? And so I worked with a few and they said, well, what if they got a text that said, hey, you know, I'm not able to answer the phone, but if you'd like to schedule an appointment, click this link. And so I did that and I worked with a few massage therapists there and that worked extremely well. I think it's one that said over the course of a month, it saved 16 calls. And I don't, I forgot how much it, I think it was like five grand or something. I don't remember. Yeah. It was 85 times 16, whatever that is. <laughs> yeah. That was the average cost of their appointment. So, well, not 80, it's about three grand, something like that, smaller. And so that worked well. And then what we found though, was that when we would send these texts, people would want to reply back to them, right? Cause they have questions. And so at the time when they would reply back, like the text just went in that thin air. And so we said, okay, especially for therapists who have multi, multi-therapist offices. I get a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. This is where you lose me. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Cause one schedule to the client is one thing, but like I've never been a business owner who's hired therapists. I have mm -hmm. no idea how they juggle multiple therapists, but go ahead. Yeah. So appointment hero makes it really easy, by the way. I can, we can talk about that in a moment. Yeah. But so now, like if you're in a multi-therapist office or you have a front desk person, they'll get the text message and they can text with the client back and forth. Right. So even if the client replies back. And so that worked well. And then we, what we found was there's times when that person is not able to text back. And so we said, is there something else we can do? Is there another level we can go? And so I have a background in machine learning and, and AI. I got a PhD in it. And so I said, well, let's build a bot. Let's build a receptionist, an AI receptionist. And it took probably two years to actually get it right. Because at first it was, it was stupid. I mean, that was the easiest way to put it. It was like the bots you normally see, the Facebook messenger bots. Yeah. Like everybody hates those. I hate those. And, and so what we said was, well, what are the key things it needs to know about? And it's services, cost, who's working, how long, how long is it, what's the duration of a service and things like that. And so, you know, today people are able to say, I need to schedule an appointment with Jason at 530. And it would, it would actually say, okay, thanks and check. And if there's an availability, it would then ask them for, you know, their name and so on. Or you could say, I just need to schedule an appointment, you know, and it can handle it from there. Yeah. So, you know, and the cool thing about it too, is you can even, you know, if there were questions like, do I need to wear a mask or uh, that's a common one, or where should I park? That's another common one. You can add that yourself. So like you can customize it to, to your practice with frequently asked questions you see that your clients ask. No, FAQ. <laughs> oh God. Yep. I have to redo the stuff on my website because it's too like clients, classes, retail on like I have to kind of <laughs> take a main FAQ and break it into chunks and put the FAQ on different spots on my website. I have an issue with that. And it's funny you mentioned the website. So you know your scheduling goes on your website, right? The scheduler. And so one of the things we've seen, because I studied this too, we actually recorded people's websites, therapists' websites to see like what people would do. And one of the things we found was if your information, if the information they're searching for is not within a few clicks, yep. they're out. They will yep. go somewhere else, right? They will schedule yep. another appointment. It doesn't matter. Yep. And so we said, 
well, we could help people fix their websites, which is something I used to do. I'm not a fan of that anymore. <laughs> Uh, what else could we do? And so we actually have a, a chat bot that works the same as the text, uh, yeah. the text back. And somebody lands on your website, it says, how can I help you? And they may say, do you do, you know, X type of massage? You know, can I get a deep tissue massage or something like that? And it will answer the question. And then the whole point is to schedule them, right? So then it'll start trying to schedule and help them schedule an appointment. So it behaves the same as your is te the texting is just on your website. Yeah, like I'm encountering s some issues related to stuff I do, but again, it's more it's more broad. I haven't let's put, I have my own infrastructure issues. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you offer a lot of different things too. Like you don't just offer massage. You yeah. do classes. So you do... one of the things I've noticed we talked about business, right? A yep. lot of the students think, well, Robert's work is just amazing and he's been so successful and he's so gifted. And I'm like, no, <laughs> like I work 80 hours a week. That's why. Right. And I don't stop. And it's yep. like, you know, I could have completely stopped at like good body work. Yep. But I was like, let's figure out software. I talked to you and you're like, are you using, are you using OBS? And I'm like, why? He knows what OBS is? How, how does he know what that is? Like, how many months have I spent clicking buttons and software trying to figure out how to do this, organize audio signals, video, and yeah, it's like, it's, it's just relentless and maniacal. And with a website and especially uh, tech infrastructure, I have a tendency to go to my website and use it and go, man, that don't, that don't flow right. Right. I gotta, like, how do I shorten the text and then have a clickable button to get them where they need to be like, okay. So they hit my website and in my classes, I got, you know, classes, clients, retail. So it's like, okay, how do I make those three buttons? Like, okay, I'm looking for a session. That's a different, you know, set of parameters and factors, information they're looking for. So trying to essentially dumb it down, yep. you know, so that it's clickable. And I, and I give examples like this in class with Amazon. I had some batteries I bought for another microphone and I finally just, Jason, I had it up to here. <laughs> and I said, screw this microphone, I'm returning this. And I think, it's not the company, I think I just got a lemon. I think I got a bad microphone. So I worked with it for a month, kept trying to you know, change settings. I finally decided to return it and I had a huge amount of anxiety. Cause I'm like, I gotta get a box and then I gotta get some tape and then I don't have a printer and I gotta go to Kinko's and I got, and then I, I was like, Robert, just sit down on Amazon's website. And I said, I want to return this. And they said, well, where do you want to drop it off? And I went, huh? Like, I don't have to bring it just to the post office. And they had like Kohl's, which is nearby me. And there was a UPS store. And they said, yeah, you don't even need a box. It's completely free. Just, just bring the item in to, to the UPS store. I, oh, okay, and I click buttons and finish, and they're like, yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and process your refund as soon as we receive the item. And I went later that day to UPS, and I went up to the, they had a QR code that was on my phone. Yep. And then I was like, I have a thing to return. <laughs> <laughs> and they went, boop, okay, put it in the bag. Like, cool, here's your receipt, thank you, have a great day. And I was like, what? Oh my God, like, and the thing is, it seems weird because I've been ordering from Amazon, but I haven't had a reason to return anything. And that's what I mean about the incremental, gradual, like making it easier. I guarantee you Amazon's return policy wasn't that same thing like five years ago. Yeah, it was, I've returned things from Amazon and it yeah. wasn't. Yeah. Recently, like I had the same experience you did. Like, my wife bought something and I had to return it to Whole Foods. So I just brought it in there and they scanned the QR code like you said. And like, I didn't have to give them a card to put the money back on. Like not, it was just like, I was like, and it took five seconds. Yep. And I'm like, yep. that was too easy. Like, yep. and, and I always use this example when I'm talking about like what your competitors are doing. So like, if I were to buy something from Walmart or Best Buy or any of those places that compete with Amazon, like that experience is not the same. Like it sucks to return things to Best Buy and to Walmart. I've done it. Yep. You know, and when you think about like your own practice or as a massage therapist, like what, um, and I do this even with a former hero, but as a massage therapist, what can I make easier for the client? 
you know, and yep. I see a lot of therapists say, well, should I give them a refund? You know, should I let them use this gift certificate? Yeah. You know, like, 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 don't, unless they like are doing something, you know, unscrupulous or something yeah. like that, but make it easy. The easier you make it for your clients to do business with you is the more they're going to want to do business with you. And it's more they're going to want to tell their friends, Hey, did you know that it, and I've told like 10 people about Amazon, you know, yeah. did you know it was easy to return things, you know, and everybody's like, Oh yeah, let me go get this from Amazon. Right. And so yeah. The easier you make it to do business, your clients are going to want to do it. And you can do that through your policies, like certain policies you may have, but also your your technology, whether it's your scheduling software or your website or whatever it is, you need to make sure that, you know, is it easy for me to schedule an appointment? You know, I click, 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 and I'm done. Do I have to create a login? Right. That will drive people away. Different things like that. So yeah. in, in every area of your business, whether it's, you know, with your policies or with your technology, the easier you can make it for people to do business with you, the more repeat business you will get. Yeah, it's it's man. So I don't have Amazon's tech budget, <laughs> but <laughs> when I go like one click shopping, I'm like, dude, whoever whoever made that button deserves about a billion dollars. Yep. Because like when you when you take it from like three steps to one, oh, like the, when we go back to scheduling software, what I see personally and what I really realized during the pandemic with Amazon, because I moved out on my own, I'm in my own apartment. You didn't want to go outside as much. Right. And I go, well, I need I need a camera and I needed a ring light and I needed, you know, the my monitor and a few things I bought on Amazon. And then it was like, man, you know, I don't have any shot glasses. And I was like, can I buy that on Amazon? You know, and then you go look and you're like, oh my God, like the, just, you know, huge, like the stuff you can buy, right? And yep. within five minutes, it's like, yeah, pick some reasonably priced shot glasses and they, they arrive basically within 24 hours. It's like even Amazon, because I ship like physical retail workbooks and DVDs to students, it's completely mm -hmm. skewed. Like if they have to wait two weeks for an item to arrive, they're emailing me, texting me going, what's wrong? Yep. And I go, yo, bro, I got to put it in a box. I got to bring <laughs> it to the post office. Like right. I can't beat Amazon in its efficiency. <laughs> and when it goes back to appointment hero, what I see is this. I don't want software to depersonalize connection. What I think appointment hero does like most scheduling software is it saves the customer or potential customer time. Yep. They don't have to like text you, wait for you to get back. Then you're going to be dealing with your kids later. They basically can go, oh, here's the schedule. Here's when they're available. Wow, that Thursday appointment looks great. I could do one o'clock. Yep. It saves them time in the booking process. You don't want to make it difficult for clients to book a session. Exactly. And because people want to text, there is the only scheduling software that I know <laughs> that, that lets people text to schedule is MindBody. MindBody does have the ability for you to just send a text message and schedule, but MindBody is meant for bigger spas, yeah. right? Generally speaking. But other than that, like Appointment Hero, to my knowledge, is the only one where you can, your clients are able to just text you, text Appointment Hero to schedule an appointment. And when you're done, it's like, oh, I have five new appointments for, you know, next week, you know, things like that. So that was my goal was to try to make things a lot easier. And, and there are certain areas I've seen too, like last minute appointments is a big deal, like trying to fill those because people would cancel. Yeah. And so after speaking with a lot of therapists, I said, well, how do you fill those appointments? And they go, well, I go on Facebook, I post, you know, I have an appointment. I go on Instagram, different things like that. Or I may email a client who I think may can come in or something like that. And I said, wow, that's a lot of manual work yeah. to hope that you're going to schedule an appointment. And so one of the things we're doing that I, I don't see a lot of people doing, I think I see it in some one or two schedulers, is text marketing. So you can actually like say, okay, this is a group of people uh, who are likely to come, you can tag people and then you can actually text them to see if they're able to come in. And that has been really successful. Like that has worked really well because people respond to text message, I think like 
90 some percent of the time, according to studies yeah. versus an email or even Facebook. So that's something I've seen too, in terms of saving time and being different, but you want to be careful. Like you don't want to just text your entire client base because then they're going to feel like they're being spammed. So how you do it matters. Yeah. I, I built my business in the era more of like ladder email marketing. I gave away a free time massage workbook and it was probably the brightest idea I ever had was like, oh, I just give them a free workbook and get, make an email list. It was kind of, that was literally as, as, as much depth as I gave the process at that time. It's like, I got a digital thing. I can send it to them via email, give them a link so they can download it. Like mm -hmm. it doesn't cost me anything to distribute it digitally really. So it's like, yeah, whatever. Now the issue is I've got so many students and the students, especially younger students are like, yeah, I don't check my email. And I go like, how do you have a business? <laughs> right. And it's like, well, they're like, I want text messages. And I'm like, oh my Lord. I spent all this time and money building an email list, paying for MailChimp, organizing temp templates. You're talking about email templates. Yeah. And now you want text messages. I'm like, man, I have to pay again mm -hmm. to like be able to send out mass texts. Now I will work at it because I want to communicate with people the way that people like to be communicated with. But when it's my business is primarily me, holy moly, it gets inordinately complex very fast when I'm juggling 10 pieces of software you go. to give somebody a workbook, a DVD or schedule a session. Yep. And that was, like I said, that was one of the main things for us was we wanted email marketing there so that you could, you know, email your clients regularly or at least Tell them about your openings once a week at the minimum. We want to text marketing there for the last minute appointments because we know that that helps a lot. And even things like I've seen a lot of like, like people do gift certificates or packages. There's some scheduling software where they'll say, okay, use Square for gift certificates or use with gift, gift, gift card cafe. That's the other one. Uh, and it works really well. Like gift card cafe is great. Like I don't have any issues with that or square or any of them. But what I found was that the more you have to go out and like hook up all this different technology, like you have square or gift card cafe, then you have MailChimp, then you have, you know, whatever it is you use for text marketing, then you have your scheduler. And then you have this, it's like, like you said, it's like 10 different things. I'm one person, right? And, or maybe, even if you have a, a, you know, there are multiple people working for you, you're still the owner, right? It's even worse when you have multiple people working for you because now you hook up something for yourself, you have to also hook it up for them too, right? So it, it it's easier, in my opinion, when you can have everything in one place. And when I'm say a, a lot of different, like if you look at the different softwares out there, they'll say, oh, it's everything you need to schedule. Eh kind of right it is everything you need just to schedule an appointment but it's not everything you need to actually run your business and so that's one of the biggest differences we noticed too and it kind of makes sense because price points like one of the biggest things i've noticed in this industry is and this is every industry but specifically here price point matters right if you're going to come out with something that's 300 dollars, like mind body you're not selling that to a solo massage therapist even if they've been in business for five years. Right? It makes no sense versus there are some free services out there or there's some services that cost less than like 30 bucks and they're great for what they do. But what I found is that if you want everything all in one place, $20 free is not going to do it. You know, $20 is not going to do it. And you can't look at it like this is going to cost me X. Well, you can and you should, but you should also look at it like is it going to make me money? Cause that's yeah, really the, the, the investment mindset, man. It's, Oh, I told you the students, if they have a business issue yep. and they're like, well, how much does it cost? And I'm like, hold on. How much, if, if it works, how much could you make? Yep. And they don't, they don't really believe that. Like they're like, nah, you're trying to scam me. You're trying to just get, get more money out of me. And it's like, listen, when I teach you, I don't make more money by burning bridges. Right. The, way, the way I got more clients is I helped clients. The way I get more students is I help students. Like mm -hmm. this is a long-term business. This isn't a short-term, 
drag as much money out of the students as you can get. No, right. build good yeah. connection with students that maintain a career that's 40 years long. Yeah. And that's how I view it too. Like I'm not just here overnight. Yeah. Like I view it like, you know, the goal is to help you. My, my main like goal is to help massage therapists not necessarily make more money because some people that's not what they want, right? But it's to either make you more money and or save you more time, right? And time is something, and I tell, I tell when I talk to a lot of therapists, I tell them this all the time. Time is time is greater than money because it's not something you can get back. Once you expend time on something, that's it. You're not getting that time back. Whereas this money, you could be broke today and tomorrow you could have five hundred dollars, right? Depending on you know your business or what you're oh, doing. I, I'll go to Amazon. I still do this. And I buy like kippered snacks or smoked oysters, some kind of tinned fish, something you don't like anybody with money. Don't spend time price shopping. (laughs) (laughs) And I go, if that can of kippered snacks was 20 cents more a can at, you know, the, the store, it's like you don't have to put it on your grocery list. You don't have to go to the store and you're saving time. And that's where things like I see this again and again, it's not just Amazon, it's also Uber. The thing that Uber did wasn't just transportation. They did solve the transportation problems, but taxis solved the transportation problems. The Uber was fast. Yep. It was like the first time I used it and it's like I accidentally pressed the button and it's like, you're right, I'll be here in five minutes. And I went, what? No, that's not that's not possible. Versus an hour. And I had to look at it, look at it. And I was like, oh my God, how did they? And it was like, oh, wow. I didn't realize how far it had sunk like into the culture and how many people were driving for Uber. Yep. Saves time. And with a taxi, you'd have waited an hour. So (laughs) more or less. So yeah, that's that's a big thing with, with another thing with a former hero, like I said, is the time saving and I get specific and and this is all scheduling software, but like appointment reminders, that's done. Reviews, this is a really big one in terms of time savings. So I see a lot of therapists post, how do you get reviews? And some people will say, oh, well, I ask and that's great. And, or they'll say, I text or I email and that's great, but you're spending time doing that. And I can guarantee you, you're not doing it consistently. You're not sending that review email or that review text message to each new client that you have. And that's one of the things that Appointment Hero does. And not only does it send it, but it doesn't like we don't get we don't store your reviews. Like if you get a review on Google, that's on Google. If you get a review for Facebook, that's on Facebook. It's not on Appointment Hero. And that's a big deal because if it was on Appointment Hero, I'm helping myself. Like that would be basically helping Appointment Hero's SEO grow because it's on Appointment Hero versus if it's on Google and people search for you, <clears throat> that's helping you go higher up to the top when somebody says massage therapist near me because reviews are a factor in, in your page ranking and where you rank on the page. And so that was, a, that was a big deal for me because I know there are some scheduling softwares that do it in massage and dentistry and in a lot of other industries, but I chose not to because I knew it wouldn't help the massage therapist. It would only help myself. And third party reviews are what the public trusts. Yep. Exactly. So that was, that's another, like, like, as I'm talking, I'm just thinking of like differences, but also like how it could help as well. And that's a big one. Yeah. When, when I talk about social media production and video, particularly, which again, the students think, oh, Robert's so gifted. And it's like, no, (laughs) (laughs) I just keep pushing buttons and keep working cameras and like Instagram. And it's like, then you had a main Instagram feed, then you got Instagram stories and then you got reels and they're like, I don't understand what's the difference. And I'm like, it's like three separate apps within the app, like Mm -hmm. three different ways of, of, of viewing stuff. And then I start talking about TikTok, and they're like, Nope, you lost me. I'm not on TikTok. I don't want to be on TikTok. I don't get it. And I go, okay. I mean, you know, it's your loss, but basically they're like, I want it all in one. They want yep. to make one post and it goes to every, every place. And I go, LinkedIn is not Twitter and Twitter right. is not YouTube and yep. YouTube is not TikTok. Like these, are, 
they're different platforms. You can't. You can't take your even Instagram. Like you can't take Instagram content. Facebook content and put it on Instagram. Like they don't, Instagram is for pictures. Like like the feed, the Instagram feed. And so what I always tell people, cause people will say to me like, not with social media, but even with scheduling software, I'm like, pick one. <laughs> yes, you wanna be on them all, but when you're first getting started or if you're switching, pick what is the most important thing to you right now? To your, where are you, and, and in social media, where are your clients? Are they on Facebook? Are they on Instagram? Are they on TikTok? If they're on TikTok, you can hate TikTok all you want, but if they're on TikTok, that's where you should be, right? It's not about what you think or how you feel. And I had to even go on like marketing appointment hero. I had to go through this because <laughs> when I first started, I just had a scheduler. There was no AI receptionist. And I said, okay, I'm going to sell this scheduler. And what I found was people don't want another scheduler. They, schedulers are great, but they don't just want another scheduler. It's what people want is I want to be able to have appointments books when I am sleeping, when I am, you know, doing a massage or wherever I'm, I'm doing. I want that. And I want it done across all wherever my customers choose to book, whether it's on the phone, through text or whether it's online. Right. Or I've seen as an example where people would say, you know, do you have feature X, whatever it may be? You know, and, and the question is, is that really, like one of the things I have to boil down with them is, is this really important to you? Like, what are you, how is this helping your business? You know, so like, as an example, I'll take gift certificates. And I asked one lady, she's like, well, I'm not doing gift certificates yet, but I want to do it in the future. And I said, but is, what is the one thing that, that is, why are clients coming to you? Like, what is that thing? And so when you boil it down to that, that's when I've seen people be, not just from like appointment hero, but just be more successful in their business in general because they're focusing on the on the one thing and they're focusing on where are their clients. I always look at it and I forget, I think, over the 18 year career I've had, I forget how much it's changed. Like you're just kind of where you are and you just like, what do you mean you don't understand? Of course you gotta right. be on TikTok or whatever to want to talk on the students. But mm -hmm. the business has progressed so far in whatever amount of time that it represents something that's really different in the marketplace. And I think the reason I adapted to technology was I was trying to do something that was mat based and close on. So immediately therapists were like, well, this isn't massage. And I'm like, eh, but the clients want pain relief and mobility. Like the clients love this stuff. They, right. they freak out about it. The clients get a session and go, this is amazing. You know, why, why isn't this everywhere? And I go, because massage therapists keep telling me it's not massage. And they're like, what? Oh my God. <laughs> and then it was like, playing to my strengths was one, I would work hard and press buttons. Wasn't worried about being on camera. Like they were going to hate me anyway. So just like build the number of people who liked you and allow the haters to have a loud voice. Like mm -hmm. I'm going to be hated anyway. So let's make some money. <laughs> yep. That was kind of the attitude. So playing to social media. And when I say social media, I mean the website, producing stuff on social media platforms, blogging, making YouTube videos regularly, educating people. The reason I leaned to it so heavily was it helped fill in the gaps. Well, why does Robert do this weird thing? I don't understand, where's the table? Like the video portion and then the online scheduler, you know, allowed me to, to bridge that gap. So the, the website itself was my front desk. And what I found with my online scheduler was I wound up in a situation where I charge right now 240 a session. I wouldn't have anything available for two weeks. And then there's like work workers, DVDs and teaching and all this stuff on my website. I wouldn't get every client, but the people would hit my website and go, man, this looks, man, I have pain. This looks interesting for what I do. Then they look at the online scheduler, see that nothing was available for two weeks and go, Ooh, this guy must be good. I, I got to book an appointment. And they mm -hmm. book out like a month in advance, sometimes more. I had to slow back and say, hey, you can't book past like six weeks out because it gets too weird with my teaching schedule. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, the online scheduler, I think, created 
an image in the potential client's mind of success because I wasn't available that day. I might not be available the next day. They might have to wait a week, but it yep. changed their perception of its value. I agree. And it looks like demand, right? Like it looks like, oh, he's in demand. And if he's in demand, then that's where I'm going. Exactly. Yep. And that's just natural consumer behavior, I think. And and for for a therapist who don't like I've I've spoken to a lot of therapists who don't have online scheduling. And the 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 thing with that, like talking about like that behavior, is they'll say things like, Oh, well, people don't think that way. <laughs> and I'm like, no, they do. Like, like it doesn't matter whether it's a massage or whether it's why do you think that athletes and superstars sell, like, have all these endorsements? Why was Michael Jordan doing Gatorade? Michael Jordan probably didn't care about Gatorade, but people like Michael Jordan. Oh, he's, it's Michael Jordan's doing it. They may go do, like, he's in demand, right? And so, therefore, you know, so that, that's just, I think, natural human behavior, not even consumer behavior. That's natural human behavior when you see something is either people really like it, so it's used up in your case. Or they really like the person who's doing it or the thing who's doing it. That's why there are celebrity endorsements. Yeah. So but yeah, so with people in there in like the, the the those who don't use online scheduling, I will say this. You do have to do what's right for your business, I think. Well, I know for a fact. But the leap from doing pencil and paper to, to doing online scheduling is it's not as big as you think, especially if you, like with me, like I work with therapists individually right now. So it's not like, oh, I go sign up and there's this, you know, huge company and I'm not going to talk to anybody, you know, like you will talk to me, you have my phone number. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to be talking to you every day, but yeah. you know, and so it's, it's not, the gap is not that big as you may think. It's just a matter of, you know, do I want to look in demand? Do I want more time back? Would I like to make more money? I mean, that's basically to me what it kind of boils down to. I don't think, you know, it's, it's really that simple. I mean, I get really, really excited about business growth generally. Um, yeah. Probably more excited about it than I do body work at this point. I mean, I'm, I'm good at that. I like working with clients and I'll continue to do that. But the, the business growth and the entrepreneurial bug hit me. And you see all this, these angles and leverage and leveraging technology. It's like, yeah, I had to sit down and press buttons just to try to figure out how to get the audio to work on this. And hopefully it worked. But it's like the more stuff you do that's difficult, it allows your business to continue, you know, growing and expanding. I see lots of therapists wanting to open a facility, hire therapists. You know, they like the idea of other therapists working for them. And I go, okay but you have to manage therapists yep. and they go, well, no. And I'm like, yes. When that therapist don't show up on time, you have to now handle this therapist annoying you and this client being annoyed that they can't come in and get their session because you don't have another therapist available or however that works. Like for yeah. me, that, whew, I don't get me wrong. Like I get frustrated with cameras and audio and you know, how do I schedule Jason for the podcast? And, you know, I, I get annoyed a lot of things in business, taxes, accounting, you know, lawyers, but trying to wrangle therapists. Ooh, you talk about chat my ass. Oh man. It's like, <laughs> it's like, it's five o'clock. Where are you? I spoke to a lot of multi-therapist practices and I get, like you said, the problems are very similar. You know, they have an appointment at, five o'clock, as you said, and, and there's a rule, right? You have to be there 30 minutes before, 20 minutes before and, and nothing. They're not there, you know, and then five o'clock comes and they're not there. And so, you know, I've seen people handle it different ways. A lot of the, I call people like the cool, calm and collected. Those people tend to succeed a lot more because, you know, they'll just tell the client, hey, let's reschedule. They may give the client an add on and then they deal with that therapist, you know, however they deal with them individually versus like getting upset. Like that doesn't, I mean, people do it and, you know, works, I guess. I don't know. It depends on your, your management style. But as you said, you have to develop that management style. And it's more about leadership at that point, because whether you're working in your business and managing it, or if you're just managing it, you still have to have leadership and it's not just... 
it's no longer, okay, how can I keep my schedule full? It's how can I keep their schedules full? Now I have to market and I'm not marketing just for myself. I'm marketing for, you know, three or four different people. And you may have people that do facials and like, it may not just be massage therapists. So do I market for that in the same way? What happens when I've done my marketing and this therapist has is booked and this one is not like I've seen all those different and therapists will like this one will say, Oh, you, you favor her because, or him, because, you know, they're booked and I'm not booked. Like I call them petty, but I guess it's not petty to the therapist, but petty things like that. So yeah, you got to have some leadership skills. And if you're ever going to like hire another therapist, I suggest that, you know, you follow some people in the industry, Rachel, Ashley, those types of folks who, who are done it, who are successful in doing it and, and can kind of give you some knowledge on how to do it. Yeah. There's a lot of pieces and I know that, you know, I don't run a multi-practitioner facility, but I know that the reason I've been successful is because I continue to come back to the drawing board and like, let's make it a little better. Let's make the client experience better. Let's make the students experience better. Let's make the downloadable experience better. Let's the online course experience better. Let's improve it. Let's, you know, I mean, I talk to students and they're like, I don't understand. Why do you have a podcast? And I go, listen, Jason and I don't have to be best friends. Right. I don't know how, I don't know how you lean politically or religiously. And frankly, right. mostly don't care. Right. Because it's, it's business, it's not personal. And the thing is, what happens with the podcast, it's not just we make another video. It's like, for instance, why would you, and think about this for a second, why would you want to come on my podcast? What's, what's the benefit to you? Uh, well, they're multiple, right? <laughs> well, One is, real quick. yeah, I get to meet you, but then two, you have an audience yeah. that gets to learn about me. Yeah, and people are like, well, I don't understand. Why would you like promote him through your audience. And it's like, well, he's probably going to share these videos and, and people in his audience are going to learn about me. Yep. So now we're networking in a digital medium that allows me to produce more social media content. I get to tag him on Instagram when I make a little clip of this and then make an IGTV video with it or whatever. And mm -hmm. they're like, oh, so I'm getting ready to do, uh, I'm not there yet. I don't have a beer here, but uh, I'm getting ready to do like alcohol reviews like beer, mm -hmm. liquor, some tequila, some other things I've been drinking. And I'm gonna t take like an individual bottle or an individual beer at a brewery here locally and then do a review on it. But when I post it on Instagram, like I'm gonna tag the brewery, the brewery is gonna go, wow, this guy just like, wow, this guy reviewed our beer. And my hope is, and therapists look at this and they're like, I don't understand how's, and I'm like, listen, people who are into craft brews, People who are into niche food experiences, they want to go to the farm to table restaurant. You know, they want to drink high end tequila. Mm -hmm. Like I, I draw an additional audience. My hope is that the brewery says, Hey, you know, we've got a brewmaster. Like, would you, could he be on your podcast? And I go, great. Cause my hope is that I'm gaining a new audience with craft brew people who like, who is this guy? And they're like, Oh, he's a massage therapist but you're cross pollinating across industries and using tech to network with people, which I think in the end is really what appointment hero does as scheduling software is it's allowing a deeper connection. That's more resonant, more rapidly time saving to the consumer so they can go ahead and book the appointment and save the therapist time. Yep. And then with that time, like, and I've told a lot of therapists this, if you still want to handwrite them cards, now you have the time to do it. <laughs> if you still want to call and say, hey, you know, I know you, we had a session and, and I wanted to make sure everything was okay. How is it going? You now, you're not killing yourself to do that. You know, you actually now have the time to do it. Yeah. And little, little personal touches. I mean, I talked to therapists. It was uh, Instagram is a common one because Instagram is even more mobile in some ways than Facebook. They, they got a Facebook app, but... Instagram is highly, highly mobile and a therapist would like, I don't know, somebody would schedule with them through Instagram. Maybe they didn't have an online scheduler, but they had a connection with the person through Instagram. And then I go, listen, why don't you wait till the next day 
and, and send the client a quick video and say, hey John, I wanted to check and see how your knee is doing. It was really great working with you yesterday. Listen, if you need to schedule, go ahead and just go to the website. In fact, I'll include a link after this video. You can just click below. But I, I wanna see how your knee is feeling. Whoop. Something quick, it's quick. Yep. The thing is, they were like, whoa. And I'm like, I could send them a text and a text is very quick and easy, but like how much more connected does it feel that they know that you took five seconds out of your day to send them a quick video message? Was was cool. Funny you mentioned that. I was in I was working in dentistry with a came in massage, and one of the things I was working on, I was a product call called Black Hero. I love the hero theme. But anyways, what happens in a dentist office is, if you get an injection, typically the dentist should call you and say, "Hey, how's it going?" And so dentist offices, especially smaller ones, even bigger ones, you know, you get ten minutes with the dentist, so they don't really have enough time. And so what Call Black Hero did was it would like the dentist would record their, hey, you know, this is such and such and such. Just wanted to see how you were doing. And it would actually like send a voicemail. So then you pick it up, you listen to the voicemail, it's your dentist and you call back. That kind of, and the reason I'm mentioning this is that kind of personalization, even though it may not seem personal, like yeah. clients have actually said, they show that they care, right? Yeah. And so I mentioned that because um, while that's not a feature of a former hero, one of the things that I am doing is I'm literally building, I'm the software developer. I have a team, a few people, but I'm literally building this with massage therapists. So if there's something like, you know, like I want to show the back here, I want that thing, or I want this thing. Like, it's not that I do everything that everybody says, but this is a community led effort. It's not led by me who I'm going, oh, well, I'm going to give you A, B, C, D. It's, well, I need this for my business. And then, and if other people say they need that thing, you know, that's, that's what we do. So I kind of want to, to bring that point out because I think when I look at the scheduling software landscape, there are a ton of scheduling softwares. I think 50 the last time I counted. And people have said to me, why well, did you start another schedule? Right? I've gotten that a ton of times. And for me, it's about building it with the community. I think, and, and I think that'll make a bigger difference versus saying, well, here are all the features you need, go use them, right? I think, you know, that's, that's one of the, the biggest differences with the point of hero. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting to me, and I, I, I was a philosophy student, and now I'm, you know, a body worker, educator, entrepreneur, kind of in a digital space in a brick and mortar industry. Uh, a lot mm -hmm. of my teaching and stuff is going online. And it's interesting to me that people feel like in 2021 that we're more disconnected than ever. Yep. With that a way. device that allows you to communicate with people globally. You know, like people don't have any, you know, real connection. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, it's not like when the printing press was developed, people stopped listening to oration. Right. <laughs> but the technology became something that you could transport and then open up. Yep. You know, the same thing is happening on a much more massive scale. And I find a great degree of freedom, a connection and being able to, you know, talk to Carlos Gill via Twitter and go, Carlos, what do I do about, I know the Wendy's and Chick-fil-A, they're always going at each other. How do I embrace that sort of like, <laughs> you know, vicious brand stuff with my business. Like Twitter allows me to connect with him that way. That's and cool. I've gotten responses from Carlos. Hopefully I have him on the podcast soon. I've been working on software. It's just, it's amazing to me that people in some ways like downplay the technology. They downplay, it's not just online software. It's not just social media. It's like they're d denying or downplaying the impact that information has on people which i'm i'm sort of like perplexed by because to me in a way things are better than ever i agree and even like looking into the future with with artificial intelligence like people would say oh ai is going to take over or like you know like take like if you ever do fast food right there are restaurants there are robots that can cook burgers yeah. and they can take orders and you don't need people in the back to do that Right, uh, you don't need a bunch of people in the back. You should probably still have a person or two. And 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 when I talk to people about that, they're like, "Oh no, they're gonna take our jobs." And I say, "Well, wait a minute. 
you know, there's a revolution like this every so many hundreds of years, right? There was the the phone revolution as you, or the technology revolution, as you pointed out earlier. And, and, and that took jobs too, right? Like this is not a, this is not new. The question is, how do you adapt? You mentioned adaptability earlier, that you adapted. And the question for therapists going forward, especially, you know, after the pandemic, because there are a lot of like, I met a therapist during the pandemic and she says, I have a scheduler, but I need online forms and I need forms because I can't have people coming to my office, sitting down to fill out the form. In fact, they can't, this is when we thought COVID was going to kill everybody. So like early on, <laughs> so I can't have them even come into the office at all. Right. And so what we're able to do with digital forms with her is people either fill them out in their car or before they got there. And when they came for their appointment, you know, they went over it and then they got their massage. And so the question is not, the question shouldn't be, is the technology going to take over? The question should be, how can I use the technology to benefit myself, my family, and my business? Yeah. And I think if massage therapists look at it that way, whether it's online scheduling or whether it's whatever the, you know, AI is the next thing. If you look at it from that way, then technology will enable you because I saw somewhere there was like, a massage bot somewhere. It, it was terrible. But anyway, and some and therapists discussed it. Like it was in your group some, at some point, a couple of years ago, a year ago, last year or something. And what I was saying was, hey, this is great. And they were like, no, this is terrible. And I'm like, is, that's not going to replace you. Yeah. That bot is not going to replace you. And the reason it's not going to replace you, it may replace people at Massage Envy. I don't know. But it's not going to replace you because you're not just running the meal. Oh, let me give you a massage and hope you feel better. Hopefully, you know, your massage is deeper than that. Like it's, it's about pain or whatever, the, whatever yeah. it is. And so when you specialize, you can even use that technology. Maybe it's like a chair massage, <laughs> right? Like they come in and if somebody wants that, you give them that. Like, think about how can I use this? Not necessarily, is this going to be against me? And if, and if you gain that kind of mindset, yeah. you will be even more able to adapt in the future. Yeah, I I don't really think, I think people have this, this polarizing thought. It's like, it's either technology or human interaction. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, nah, it's just a, it's just a spectrum. Yep. I don't feel any like ill will towards a, a burger establishment that wants to make a cheaper, less expensive, quicker, easily produced burger because there's a robot flipping it. Then yeah. I do from, I go to a local farm to table, grass finished, Texas, you know, somebody's massaging the cattle to make the tent beef more tender, you know, or whatever. Yeah. Like, those are just two different experiences. Each therapist gets to, to choose how in depth they want to go with the technology. Exactly. So maybe online scheduling is it. They're like, no, nope, I have no interest in TikTok. And that's fine. But I feel like we have more options available, but because we have so much access to communication, they get to whine more. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's just like you get to hear people. Who was that? I forgot who I was telling, but I was talking to somebody about it. And they were like, it may have been my mom. And she says, things have gotten so much worse than they used to be. And I, I agree with that to a degree. I do agree with that, but you hear about things now way more than you used to than yep. when, like, you know, when she was, because even when I was coming up, you know, I'm 30 something. So like we had a TV, but the news wasn't 24 seven. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, the TV went off at 11 o'clock. Oh, see, you're dating yourself now. <laughs> yeah. I'm just the saying, but now off, the kids are like, what, how did, how did it go off? <laughs> But that's what happened. Now it's 24 seven, whatever news channel you watch, you know, whichever one you want to watch, it doesn't matter. It is literally 24 to the point where like, I look at it and I go, they're not reporting any, like it's, it, there's no, there's no news that could be any, anyway, I don't want to get deep into that. But the point I was making was like you said, com communication, because we're now able to communicate more, there's a perception out there that may not actually match the reality of what things are. So I agree with you hundred percent. Yeah. So we got just a couple minutes before we close down. Do you have any uh, closing thoughts? Sure. So we talked a lot about different things on the website. I have a calculator. So if you go to the website and scroll down a little bit, you'll see a calculator and, and this is really cool. So the calculator will actually tell you 
how much money you will make, how much time you will save, and your percentage return if you have missed calls. So you just enter in like, on average, how many missed calls do you have a month? And then the average cost of your appointment. And then like you would select like, oh, if I'm a solo massage therapist or multi-therapist, you would select that and hit calculate. And it's not calculating based off of it would save all the calls. It's actually very conservative. So just do that. And that will really help you see like, is this right for me? Is this something I want? Because I, I was talking to a lady yesterday. I'll say this really quick. And she said, my schedule costs 15 bucks. You know, an appointment hero is 99 bucks, right, for the solo part. But that's with the calls. And she says, and you're, you, she says, you're making me pay $99. I said, well, I'm not making, you don't have to have appointment hero. You know, if you don't want it, I understand. And she says, yeah, but the missed calls. And I said, well, look, look at it. I, I, I literally went to the calculator. We were screen sharing. And I said, how many missed calls you have? What's the average cost? And I showed her and she was like, wow, I am missing $1,300 a month because I can't answer my phone. And I said, yeah, and that's not including like all of, it's not saying it's gonna save all of those calls. It's like 40 or 50% of them, right? That's conservative. Yeah. And so, you know, the calculator is, it will give you more insight into if it's right for you and if you should use it, so. Cool. So again, your uh, website is right above you. And then yes. your social media for uh, Facebook, including the Facebook group, is right below. You can find out more information about Appointment Hero, of course, at the website. And then what's in the, you said that the Facebook group is new? Yeah, so I had a Facebook group before this, but we just talked about like general technology and massage therapy. Yeah. And then I had a, a second like Appointment Hero group where we only talked about Appointment Hero. So if you want to learn, if you don't want to like commit to anything and you just want to learn about Appointment Hero, just join the Facebook group. We're talking about Appointment Hero. We're not just Appointment Hero, but like things in general, like how do I get more clients and how can Appointment Hero help me or, you know, whatever the case may be. So if you're just interested or you're curious um, and you don't want to like, I'm not ready to buy anything, which is totally cool. Just join the Facebook group. We'd be happy to have you. Cool. Well, listen, Jason, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. And I'm not trying to think of anything else. No, I guess, I guess I'll just sign out to the, uh, the followers there. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank uh, Jason for coming on the podcast today and talking to us about Appointment Hero. You guys can find me wherever you find me on social media. There's some links uh, above and below. You can uh, follow the podcast YouTube channel. I'll talk to you guys soon and hopefully in the future through our email list. I'll probably put out a list, maybe even on social media of like, how often the podcast is going to come out. Now that I've got some of the AV set up, I'm trying to get like a more regular schedule. But uh, thank you guys for supporting the podcast and thank you so much for Jason, uh, to Jason for being part of the, the podcast today. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it.